What's up guys, I'm Drizzle Hoff, and today on Maker's Best Friend, I'm gonna walk you through a detailed step-by-step -step video on how to build a frame for the Maker Made CNC. If you wanna see a sped up video showing all these steps for the build, make sure you check out my video on that link above. And all right, let's get started with the build. All right, so we're gonna start making the new Maslow CNC. I'm gonna go through the steps that they provide so that I can provide you the experience that's closest to following those steps, and hopefully I can help out with some tips. So. I have the steps here, and honestly, the plans they created are really great. Um, I'll post a link to these actual plans. Um, There's a different plan for every single portion of building Maslow, right? So you've got um, unboxing to make sure you have everything. You have building the frame, doing the sled. Everything will have its own build plan. So right now, let's build the actual frame for it. And what I have here behind me is the wood that you're required to buy. Like I mentioned in the unboxing, uh, they provide you all the hardware, but you have to go buy the wood. That's how they make it so cheap. So um, for building the actual frame, all you need is a couple of 2 by 4 that they list in the sheet, as well as a 4 by 8 that's going to be the main back of the Maslow. So um, they tell you to only buy one. I ended up getting two because you're going to need one to cut with anyways. And it's good to use one to actually cut the actual the circular sled that we're going to be cutting out later. Um, again, if you decided to buy the pre-cut one, I think that's a good saving. I think it'll save you a lot of time in having to find the right dimensions. Just having that sled perfectly cut out like they're going to for you uh, will really save some time and complexity for you down the road. All right, got the plywood, got some two by fours on the floor here. And um, you also gotta get a box of screws. These are two and a quarter inch wood screws. I also threw in um, a green paint spray that you don't need to get, but I figured it'd be cool to actually color this thing at the end of it and have a green one uh, versus just a plain wood showing. And also just got to have some wood glue. So let me take a look here. Um, all those items, the plywood sheets, remember I got two of them versus the one, and the two by fours and the nails and everything. It's about 124 bucks from your local store, right? So uh, whatever the cost of the Maslow is plus all these materials is what you're going to need to get it up and running. Then of course it's going to be the cost of actually getting pieces of material that you're going to be using to actually cut every time um, on top of it, but that's that's normal with the CNC or any type of woodworking anyways. Alright, so here we go, we're going to get to starting. You know, the steps are laid out really well, so it tells you the 2 by 4s you have to buy, and then on the third sheet here, um, it shows me all the pieces I have to cut. So we're going to get cutting the 2 by 4 the 4 by 8 we don't cut, and then we can start attaching everything with the hardware that they provided and, and the screws that we bought. Here we go. As mentioned before, we're going to start with cutting down all the 2x4s according to the provided cut list. It's organized so that you make the most out of the 2x4s purchased and you won't need any additional ones other than what they list there. I suggest cutting off a small piece of each end of the 2x4 to make sure that every piece you're using has a flat end for the build, but that's not really necessary if you don't want to. Alright, now we got everything cut up so we're going to move on to the steps of attaching all of the kickers and following the rest of the steps where we're going to be pretty much screwing everything together I believe. This is a different design from when I first made my original Maslow videos, but I think this one will have a lot of improvement so I'm excited to see what comes from that. Um, Alright, so we're going to attach the kickers and we're just going to kind of go through attaching all of the screws and all the steps right now. Here we go. Alright, I'm going to talk through this uh, first step or step 3 slash 4A real quick um, just so nobody really gets confused. So um, we're going to be placing the kicker 11 and a half inches up on the back leg and making sure it's right angled and that's going to get screwed in. And they're saying to screw a spacer in. They're not saying to put the spacer on the side where the front leg is, they're just saying to put a spacer on the part over on the other end that's not attached to anything right now because eventually the back leg is going to be attached against the front leg, pivoted over and the spacer will let it be even so that it's not angled or, or snapping. What we're doing is attaching this end over here and then we're going to come and put the spacer on this bottom end right here. Alright, here we go. So, we're going to place the kicker 11 and a half inches up from the bottom of the front legs and place it so that the end of the kicker sticks out 1 and 3 quarters of an inch past the front leg. I'll make sure that we're using a 90 degree angle when placing the kickers for better accuracy across the build. For the majority of the frame assembly, we are going to be using three screws and a triangle formation to secure everything together.
All right, now I've, I've made two of these pieces for part three slash 4A, whatever it is. Now all you do is flip it over and attach the back legs to each side. The way the back legs are gonna attach is we're gonna be attaching, I think, one screw to the top of the long, one screw to um, the front leg, I believe. Pivot it, have it attached to the spacer in the back, and then we'll screw it in. Here we go. So all I did was I lined the back leg with the bottom of the front leg, and then I attached a screw an inch from the top right in the center here, and that lets you pivot it. And they only want, they want you to pivot it up to the point of where the kicker is, just like that, and this is where we're gonna attach it. This is a lot easier, I think, than how it was before where you had to figure out the angle and make sure that it's all kind of gonna work out. This, they're, they're making the instructions kind of easy uh, to follow, so we're gonna attach the screws to the bottom now. So I just had to take apart the uh, second leg real quick uh, because I completely forgot to mirror everything. So make sure when you're putting this all together, you're mirroring one side of the leg so that um, you know when we lay them down, um, you know it's mirrored. It'll be exact replica. It can't be the same facing direction because then you know it just doesn't work. So I have to take everything back apart. I'm just going to mirror all the steps and make sure that um, it's done right this time. So make sure you're doing that when you're going through it. All right, the next step is to lay these legs down with the front with the front leg horizontal to the floor. So that's the longer piece here. So let me do that real quick. We're gonna take the lower front cross member. They're saying to attach it to the kickers, right? So that's these guys. Um, the one thing that isn't, I'm not too sure of, they don't really show too well where on the kickers they want it. So for now, I'm gonna put it flush with the bottom of the front of the kickers. But I'm kind of curious to see if I'm really supposed to align it um, so that it's with flush with the front of the legs. I'm not too sure. Um, so if there's something in this video with a note, that means I'm doing it wrong. All right, I was wrong. Uh, we got those supports have to be receded more so that those kickers, um, I should have known this because I built one of these already. Those kickers is where the plywood sheet's gonna rest on it. So I'm just gonna move those supports back up in line with the front leg. Yeah. All right. All right, so the next step, we're gonna be using this uh, support that'll be connecting from the bottom and top supports to measure out where we're gonna put the spaces. We're not attaching this into the frame yet, but here's the bottom piece that we just connected. You're gonna take the middle support that's gonna go in the middle eventually, press it on top. After we get it laid out like this, and sorry about the camera angles here, but um, we're going to take that support piece and the top is gonna to rest on top, so the support just has to be right at the top of where this lines up. And to make this easier, you can honestly just mark it with a pencil so we can move this eventually. But just like, and you want it to be as flush as possible so that we're not creating unnecessary forces, that'll be where the top support will be. And just like that, it won't move, so that's cool. And we're just gonna attach three screws into the side of this. All 
All right, now that we got the spacers attached at the top, we can attach that top cross member that's gonna sit right on top of it. And we're gonna screw it from the top into those spacers and into the sides of the legs. Here we go. Actually, it says just to screw them into the sides, so we'll just do that and not from the top. Now we're going to attach the middle support pieces um, here and the way we're going to do that is we're going to use diagonal support pieces to figure out where we're going to attach the support pieces that attach the top and bottom here. Um, so here we go with that. The next step is going to be, I think, the easiest. Um, those uh, pieces that we use to line up the middle supports, we're actually going to take and have them uh, attach as a diagonal support between the front leg and the top beam. And you don't really have to worry about the exact angles of this because it's just as a support and um, just having it there connecting the two parts will finish the support. We're putting the rear support right above the kicker and spacer of the back leg, screwing into that. That'll be more support, um, at least from the back end of things. Next, we're going to move on to step nine, where we will attach the side beams to the top of the frame. These need to be placed at a 90 degree angle at each front leg to allow for the top beam to sit flat face out. Now we gotta take a uh, top beam and we're gonna attach it to these two front uh, seven inches. And then we can attach the base four by eight onto this entire thing. And that's the frame, once we're there, here we go. So we're gonna wanna center this top support beam. So uh, the beam is 120 inches. We've got 80 and a half inches. Let me go check that. Yep. 120, 120 inches for the beam, 80 and a half between these two, 15.75, I believe, uh, is what you want off each end uh, for this beam to be connected. Obviously, this is going to be a little bit harder to part because now the beam, the thing standing up. Um, I guess I really could have just laid it down on its backside. That, to attach the top beam, we're just centering across the two legs and screwing it in from the front into the seven inch beam supports on each side. After that, I decided I wanted to add some personality to my frame, so I painted the entire thing this brighter green color, because why not? Before I mount this plywood to the front of it, I think I just noticed a pretty cool trick. With the kickers in the back, I think there's enough space to actually put plywood sheets on there uh, for storage and other things in the future. So I'm gonna give that a shot. Um, and then I'm also gonna utilize all that back space 
Uh, behind the mezzo, I'm going to put um, some shelves for more wood storage because a lot of that's not going to be used. I already know. Uh, you know, we don't move the mezzo around a lot. I'm going to put some wheels on that are those type of caster wheels that um, pivot off of the wood, so it'll be the wood will be in the ground, and you can kick it back up so the casters fall under it. Um, that allows it to be stable while using the mezzo, but. Um, just because I won't move the mazzle around a lot, I'm gonna put as much as behind as I can, like wood storage and other things that I don't need a lot, but um, utilize the space in the smaller type of garage. Uh, so here we go. That's awesome, check this out. Behind the Maslow, you can fit plywood sheets for storage. And there's enough room on that kicker for at least another three quarter inch. So 1.5 inches of thickness of wood to be stored there. I probably, I definitely probably won't be needing more than that, but it's great to have for just having plywood sheets on hand that you can grab and go for cutting wood. That's awesome. All right, let's keep going forward. To finish out the frame, all we need to do is attach screws to the plywood backing at each of the corners and then we're all done. Thanks a lot for watching and make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to follow along with the Mazda build and see all of my other projects. Thanks as always for watching guys.